Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Hope you're having a great Tuesday or whatever day you're watching this. But if it is the week of March uh, 2024 here, I hope that you are gearing up for Easter this coming weekend. We would love to have you at one of our services in person if you were local to Lake Havasu or Parker. And uh, we've got uh, five services in Lake Havasu, one uh, service in Parker. We'd love to have you. If you are not in Lake Havasu Parker, we'd love to have you tune in online. All those five service times are available to you at calvaryaz.com slash live. We'd love to have you worship with us this Easter. But hey, as we jump into your word for the day today, now that that uh, important promo is complete, uh, let me ask you, have you ever had your, your plans fall apart? Maybe it was something trivial like dinner plans with some friends and trying to coordinate schedules. Maybe it was significant like a vacation that you were trying to make happen and it just completely bombed. Maybe it was bigger, a career path that you were on, a marriage or relationship that seemed significant, maybe something bigger like that, uh, where it seemed no matter how much energy you put into it, it just wouldn't happen. You know, as we look at the, the ministry of Jesus, you see that these religious leaders called the Pharisees were trying so hard to derail Jesus' plans. They were the, the outside influence trying to undermine and destroy Jesus' plans here on earth. And as we read the Gospels and it comes to this point, it looks like they were finding their footing. It, as we read, they, they got a, a man on the inside. They got Judas to be the one who was willing to betray Jesus and feed them an opportune time and location to arrest him where it would, would be possible. They arrange all these false witnesses to testify against Jesus in this sham of a trial they put together. They secure a legal prosecution with the Roman government because of the crowds that they had gathered to pressure and provide social pressure against Pilate. They, uh, they secured not only his legal prosecution, but also the order of his execution. And they get Pilate to order him to be crucified. They did, as we saw last Friday, Jesus died. And, and there's a sense that the religious leaders think, okay, we've won, but we've got to secure the victory in our plans. And that's where you find ourselves. Matthew 27, starting in verse 62, uh, it says this. It says, the next day, that is the day after preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, sir, remember how that imposter, interesting choice of description there, uh, that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days, I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people, he's risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said, you have a guard of soldiers. Go and make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Now we have the benefit of reading this 2,000 years later and realizing they didn't in fact win. In fact, their efforts to derail the plans of Jesus actually secured God's overall plan of making an opportunity for Jesus to die for the sins of the entire world uh, and giving a stage and platform to make his resurrection even more spectacular because the Pharisees couldn't interrupt God's plan. The, the, the fact that there were guards and there was a rock there couldn't stop Jesus from rising from the dead. And, and so they didn't actually succeed in their plans. Uh, they thought at this point they did. They'll learn in a few days that they didn't. But as we look at this, I want us to reflect on two really important realities from this passage. And the first is that God's plans cannot be thwarted. Uh, no matter what outside people try to do, no matter what aspects or events or hiccups are thrown in the midst, God's plans can't be stopped. Uh, the, the Pharisees thought they were interrupting Jesus' plans and God made it to where they were actually the instruments to make them happen perfectly. And the amazing and reassuring thing is that God's plan for salvation, God's plan for humanity, God's plan for you can't be stopped by anything. He is sovereign and powerful and can work over anything to make his plans come together. That also includes our own ignorance and idiocy. We can't even stop God's plans for our life. And there's a lot of reassurance and confidence and hope that we can cling to in that. But also as we reflect on the other side of this, the Pharisees, as we look at what they were doing here, it's interesting how well they knew Jesus' teaching. 
They knew, okay, he, he has died, but they immediately knew, okay, but he's been talking about he, how he would rise three days later, and we don't want anyone to falsely make that happen. They knew his teaching so well that they could prepare for the miraculous reality of the resurrection, even if they didn't think they were preparing for it. But see, they knew his teaching, and they choose to reject him as Savior. What are you doing with Jesus' teaching? Are you being like the Pharisees here who look at the teaching of Jesus and go, yeah, but I don't really want to live my life that way. I don't want those values to be mine. I want to define those things differently. I want to do life my own way. I don't want to conform to this dated way of living described and commanded by Scripture here. Are you looking at this and going, yeah, but these are just tales. These are just stories and folklore that have passed down from ages. I'm not actually going to believe any of this stuff. Or are you reading this and going, wow, this is miraculous. This is truth. This is power in my life. And I'm going to surrender my life to its teaching, to its instruction, its guidance and wisdom. Because when you do that, God shows up in powerful ways. And his plans that he has for your life albeit different than your plans, I guarantee are so much better. And we see their power and goodness when we choose to surrender and say, Jesus, I see you as the Lord of my life in every single way. So today I pray that you would do that, that you would find hope in his plans for your life, but in looking at that, that you would surrender everything you have and say, Jesus, I believe and I'm going to follow you and I'm not going to find anything to reject. I'm just going to find more to obey and surrender to and I guarantee you'll see power in, his, in your life because of his presence if you do that. So I hope you have a great day, Calvary. Hope to see you either online or in person this weekend for Easter as we celebrate the fact that the Pharisees' plans didn't come together. We'll see you next time.